Make sure this is a... We will be live in five. Hello. Hi. What is up, Brandon Silvera? What's up, Mike? Mike Morazzo, Brandon Silvera. Guess who we are? We're the hosts. We are the hosts with, with the, the most. most of the Handcuffs and Sawdust podcast, season two, episode 30. What, Brandon? Two. It's 32. Episode 32. We're on episode 32. Episode one of season two, episode 32 overall. I won't count all the bonus episodes that we've done because Brandon said not to. So actually, those are pre shows. It is pre show to episode 31, pre show to episode 30. Yes. If you start counting those as individual shows, you're going to confuse people. We'll reach 100 faster. <laughs> Valid point. <laughs> oh my God, Brandon. It true, is... We're, we're going to pass up AWP like that. <laughs> Maybe. Are they still doing stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They are. Did so. they take a break for the holidays? Yeah, they did. They did. Oh, good. Okay. It wasn't only us. No, pretty much everybody did, Mike. All right. So I hope everybody is rested and your ears are rested and your minds are clear because we're going to fill it with bullshit on this episode. You will be dumber for listening to the show. <laughs> yes, you will. But you might laugh. Or you might not. I don't know. If you don't laugh, you have something wrong with you because we're funny. You could be retarded. Not that that's a bad thing. Oh, not, not great. Now we're flagged. <laughs> Again with the flagging. What are we in the NFL? What? Do you not know how algorithms work? Do they listen to what we say? Yes. And they pick out little words that random computers think are naughty. And then they go, oh, he said the R word. Because apparently that's what retard is, is the R word. Oh, I thought it was racist was the R word. No, no, that's just white people. Is it respectability? Is that the R word? No, that doesn't exist anymore. Oh, my God. We, we did away with that. Okay. So Brandon's wearing a brand new full house woodworking t-shirt. Literally made it two hours ago. <laughs> Is it still warm? Because that would feel good if you put it on and it was still warm. Oh, man, it was when I put it on. <laughs> was it? <laughs> it was. Nice. Is there anything Is on the back? Been... No, nothing on the back. Just real simple. Oh, okay. Small logo up front. So. I have, uh, I just ordered, because there's a bunch of you that listen to the show and then also follow me on uh, my woodworking page at Moraza Woodworking, that ordered T-shirts from me. So first of all, I wanted to say thank you very much for doing that. And the order was placed. So, you know, barring a hurricane or a tornado, by the end of January, I should have your T-shirts out to you. So I wanted to thank everybody who put in an order. Brandon, you'll just get one because I'm sending you one. Yeah, sweet. That's, I'm probably going to just send you a T-shirt too once I come up with a bitch and cool design for one. You're wearing it. I know, but I want to do a little bit more. Like maybe it'll have like just a little something up front. I got to incorporate a flag somewhere. Oh yeah, oh probably, that's right. Probably to on do. the sleeve. Yeah, I wanted to put the flag on the sleeve. I didn't tell everyone about that though, so that'll be a surprise. Maybe they're yeah, hearing just about make it now. Sure. Yeah, well, and if they don't like it, well, they can go to hell. Who doesn't like a flag on your sleeve? <laughs> Communists. Probably. Where would they be from? Communist what? In communist Russia. Maybe flag even China. Flag where's you? In, in Soviet Russia, flag where are you? Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. Shout out to our buddy who listens to us in, in Moscow. In, uh, in Moscow. Yes. Oh, and I just did a sticker swap um, in Germany. Cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm going to put it up um, on the sticker cabinet tonight. It's funny because he reached out to me on Instagram about doing a sticker swap. And he follows me, and then I follow him, his woodworking page. And I'm like, yeah, cool. And I finally sent it out. And then he sends me this a couple stickers and a business card. And then, uh, oh, nice letter in German. <laughs> so now I got to go to Google Translate. Here, Russia. Not, a, not again. Natasha. Not again. Natasha Romanoff. That's my girl. It's so. Scarlett Johansson. Well, it could be. Or it could be Natasha Romanoff. I don't know. So, big fan of Russia. Did you watch Hawkeye? I haven't yet. 
Oh. I, mean, I, guess I still got to watch Book of Boba Fett. I got all kinds of stuff I got to watch. Yeah, I wanted to start Book of Boba Fett, and, and my buddy Drew did. But then I, I went online because I'm trying to finish some other stuff first. And I was just reading reviews. And one review I read just absolutely slaughtered the Book of Boba Fett. He's a big Star Wars guy. Thinks the acting's horrible. A whole bunch of other stuff. And I'm like, well, I'll see. I want to see it. We'll see what in, I think. I don't get paid In the to. words of the dude, that's just like your opinion, man. <laughs> that's right, man. So I do have, speaking of Hawkeye, the new Hawkeye-themed bottle opener available in my Etsy shop. Looks like this. Uh, it's pretty cool. Very proud of it. Um, if you're listening to the show, you can't see it. <laughs> it's black. It looks, it looks awesome. It's black and purple. And purple. It's got the new Hawkeye logo. Yeah, it's and, super and cool. A, and a purple um, actual opener. And then I did a Miles Morales Spider-Man bottle opener. I did a black and gold Spider-Man. I did an Andrew Garfield blue and red Spider-Man. I did a Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. I did the black and red uh, Tom Holland Spider-Man logo. So all of these are available in my Etsy shop. What do you got in so your So go Etsy check shop? those out. So go I have same old out. stuff. I haven't added anything new. Okay. In fact, if you want a Christmas tray, yes. you should order it now because I am going to take those down soon. Are you going to offering a be discount? Kitchen. I am. I'm going to put them on sale for like a week. And I'm going to knock them down like probably 50%. Wow. That's, that's an, you hear that first here, folks. Heard that first here. I'm so tired. Christmas blowout. Christmas blowout from Full House Woodworking. Those things are very cool. Uh, 50% off. Brandon just said it. So head yeah. over to Full House Woodworking on Etsy and check them out. Within a Do week, that. you said? Or by the yeah. end of the week? It's, it's going to be a very short-lived sale. So by next Sunday, the yeah, 9th, so, it'll be good. Yeah, done. so probably within the next uh, okay. couple of days. We'll, cool. we'll work out when the uh, episode's going to drop, and then I'm going to try to time it to where about 12 hours after I'll start the sale. That way people will have a chance to listen, Yeah, and then they can go. Awesome. Good deal. I wish I was in the market for one of those because I would buy one from you. I, I uh, My kids thought they were super cool, and they actually helped me design it. That's even cooler. But they had a bunch of fun setting the stuff out and sitting the cookies in the cookie spot, the milk in the milk spot. And everyone that I sold one to uh, had the same kind of reaction that their kids just had an absolute blast. Awesome. And Christmas it was all good up. then. Oh, Christmas was awesome. We didn't go anywhere or do anything. We stayed home and stayed in our PJs all day. Okay. And then in the evening, my mom my mom actually came over and hung out with us all day. Nice. And then uh, she, say, she stayed with the baby, and then the rest of us went and watched uh, Spider-Man. Yeah, baby. Nice. We, uh... Christmas Eve was canceled. Uh, I usually go to my cousin's. When I'm off, I'm not off very often for Christmas. So uh, Christmas Eve, we were going to go to my cousin Sherry's house. She hosts every year. And my dad and my stepmom and my sisters all there, my brothers. And um, so on Wednesday, I think it was Wednesday, my, my cousin texted us and said that her son was sick. And I'm like, all right, well, he, he moved out. He's got his own place in the city. But apparently he comes and stays at his mom's house, my cousin's house, for the weekend because he works at a place called Medieval Times. Which Ooh, I've is, heard of it. Yeah, it's a, they joust and there's tournament. it's a tournament dinner place. Yeah, super cool. Yeah, it's very cool. So when he works the weekends, he stays right down the street at his mom's house because it's closer than driving in from the city. So apparently he was sick. The, the, so I'm like, okay, he's sick. He's not feeling well. So my response... So my response... Is, oh, oh, I got... Yeah, whatever you did, I'm hearing the feedback. Okay. I'm better now. My bad. Okay. My bad. So my response was, did he take a test? And the answer was, well, he laid in bed all day, and he's got a fever, and he didn't take a test. So my, I'm like, okay, we're not coming. Hello. He's probably got COVID. He's so fine. none of us went. No one went. So Christmas Eve, I think um, – we didn't go there, so just me and the wife and kids, we opened our presents here. And my sister, because my sister was here, and her, her daughter came. So we had our own little Christmas Eve here. And then on Christmas Day, her, her dad and her brothers came over for our Christmas Day, which for me, I think I got up at like, I got up early at like 3 or so. And uh, we were going to go yeah. see a movie. J just for everybody that's not clear, 3 is not mean 3 a.m. It means 3 p.m. Which is early for me. Yes, 3 p.m. 
So it was nice uh, seeing everybody, and it was a nice Christmas. It was nice being off. And I got, like I told you, one of the gifts I got was this Natasha Romanoff. Uh, <laughs> supposed to be a six-foot high cardboard cutout for the shop. It's 12 inches tall. And then I got a new printer for the shop, which has been working out fine because fantastic. When I have to print invoices and stuff and when I do the, the badges on the flags I do, mm -hmm. I got to keep running up and down the stairs, and that sucks. So got myself a printer for the shop. Um. I think that's it for big stuff. You know, like I said, my domino I bought for myself, but that was, you know, mid-December. So I don't count. It was a gift, but. Yeah. Yeah. So how was your week at work? Or the weeks oh. at work? Well, it's been just absolutely nonstop. So I am no longer a midnighter. I know you suck. I am officially a swing shifter. And I got to tell you, this is the best kept secret in the world. Mike, just hear me out, Okay. okay. When was the last time on a work day you got a full eight hours of solid sleep? I, well, here's the thing. I try and do it every day, but I, I get usually seven and a half hours. Right. But yeah. how many times do you wake up and you're like, I feel good? Yeah, rarely. Right, feel right. refreshed. Rarely. Yeah. That's yeah. what it's been for the last three weeks. It's been That's absolutely awesome. amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. So my kids enjoy it. In fact, my son at dinner one day said, hey, dad, don't don't be mad, but we like swing shift dad way better. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, of course you do. I said, I do too, buddy. Yeah. Swing shift dad's not but, crabby. Yeah. And I get like a whole extra day off. Right. Because like you don't have been, to sleep it's on been your day throwing off. Me, yeah. It's been throwing me off. Like, right. I'll sit here after two days. And I'm like, oh, man, I got to go to work tomorrow. No, I don't. No, I don't. Right. I get a whole extra day. So yeah, that's awesome. that's been really nice. Um, the work has been work. <laughs> so I have a uh, recruit that should be <laughs> yes, pretty close. It, so where he is in training is right before he goes back to his primary FTO to be shadowed. for for the plain clothes portion. Okay. You wear the FTOs in plain clothes. Yes. Right, yes. Okay. So the FTO goes in plain clothes and is essentially a ride along. Okay. And um, that's how you do it, your shadow. It, you don't follow them in another squad. No. Okay. No. Then usually once they're off on their own, they kind of like hang out in that same district for a week, and then that's would be like the shadow thing where you just you're in a different patrol car and you kind of follow them around. Okay. Um, but yeah, this guy is not ready. Not like, ready not at even all. Close. No. Did he have like to he respond could, to any hot calls? Uh, several. So, um, my first experience with him driving with the lights and sirens was we were going to an armed robbery. Armed robbery. Now let me, now let me set, set the stage for you a little bit. It's been raining. The road's a little wet and, uh, the call comes out. It's in a different district. So we, got, it's going to be a good long run. Like, Hey, this is going to be a great chance to, to see how well he handles that and, uh, to get some practice in doing it. So I go, cool, let me attach us to that. Boom. Do it on the computer. I go, all right. Punch it, Chewy. <laughs> That's a Star Wars reference for those of you that yeah, don't know. Yeah, if you if you don't get that, stop listening to the show. We don't want you. <laughs> yeah. So he flips the lights, hits the siren. And I'm like, all right, let's go. Anytime now. We can go. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> I look I look over at the spotometer. Yeah. Forty five miles an hour. On a major road, like we're not driving through a, a, a neighborhood or or a parking lot. You're like like on we're a four on lane. like a major road in the city, like three lanes. Each turn direction. pocket. Yeah, yeah, like mm, raised center median. Like What's, nothing's like, gonna come across. Does he get up really close to the steering wheel and like hug the steering wheel like an old lady? No, he and, he didn't get that close, but like he did, like sit up taller. Like okay, like, all right, I'm like let let's go, dude. Like. It's an armed robbery. Let's go. Let's go catch the guy. Small pedal on the right, please. Yeah. It's the <laughs> long, skinny it. one. If you press that towards the floor, the car will go faster. Try it. It works. Like, uh, but at the same time, like, don't drive outside your limits. But if you can go faster, let's do that. We, we did not do that. <laughs> he was at his limit. It's 45 miles an hour. He was at his limit. You know what? If that's his limit, that's his limit. But that was a new experience. I've never gone that slow while responding in that fashion. Yeah, that would be do that kind of call. Kind of. He also got to see his first uh, his first dead guy. 
Oh, excellent. I love those days. Yeah. Yeah, it was a suicide. Dude hung himself. Hanged himself, Brandon. Hung. Not hung. Hanged. Hung. Hanged. I don't care. He hanged himself. He was dead. How did he, he hang fucking... himself? What was he hanging from? A uh, railing. And I just want to take a second. Did to you say a whoever... railing? Yeah. So whoever built his house. <laughs> Solid props to the contract. Built the railing on the second floor. Like the, like these are really nice houses on a in a country club. Okay. In the Bay Area. So we're talking multi-million dollar homes. Okay. But whoever built that. I mean, this guy did like the nylon cord around it like four or five times, tied a little knot, like no kind of fancy knots, wrapped it around his neck, off the second floor, and then hung there for it. We we didn't really get a a definitive time that he was there, but it could have been up to two hours. Okay. Not a crack, not a bow. I mean, that thing was still solid. Was it wood, wood railing? Yes, it was. Wow. So whoever whoever built that oak, bravo. I don't know. It was painted. Oh, so not oak. Hopefully not oak. No. Hopefully you don't I hope paint not. oak. Could no, be popular. I, it, it could be. I don't know. But it held. And wow. this guy was not like a tiny human. You know, he was like your average size guy. So that was interesting. But yeah, you could see him like he's. <laughs> we're standing there waiting for the coroner, and someone's got to stand next to the body. Yeah. Or like have eyes on it. And he's just staring at it. <laughs> What's that? Just staring. I'm like, hey, buddy. Oh, poor guy. You all right? He's like, yeah. Is like, your first dead guy? Yeah. First dead? How yeah. long has he been on the street? Um, a couple months. Like, kind of surprised that he hasn't been to a dead guy before. Yeah, right. So I was but, thinking. <laughs> he's just like staring at it. I finally go, hey, stop staring at it. <laughs> <laughs> stop staring at the body. Yeah, stop staring at it, dude. You're going to freak yourself out. Like, you're going to burn that image into your brain. You're not going to sleep real good. <laughs> well, maybe he, oh, you know. Oh, okay. Maybe like, this is your first. Didn't want yeah, to. I was at, yeah, I was like, is this your first dead guy? He's like, yeah. Like, All right, well, don't fucking stare at it. Just, yeah, he's dead. He ain't going anywhere. Did Did you tell him, you know, if he needs to talk to somebody later to give you a buzz? If he hasn't seen yeah, I said, people before? Yeah, I said, hey, this is. Gives you an issue, like, let me know. Like, I've seen plenty. <laughs> yeah. Like, so, just, yeah, let me know. He said he was fine. So, I checked over with him a couple times throughout the week of, like, hey, you good? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Good. All right. Yeah, so. I, I told you, right, the one time I had a rookie with me and didn't even go to the academy yet. And he was still wearing civvies, and we responded to a an ambulance call. And then we get there, and the guy says, hey, you're here for me. And he's like, pushed out a screen and a third floor window and then he jumps out the window and then lands on his head right in front of us. Did yeah, I tell you that hold story? on. I'll, yeah, hold on. I'll be right down. <laughs> and then I said that a rookie, because the guy just killed himself in front of us. And I said that a rookie, hey man, are you all right? You know, if you need someone to talk to, and he goes, no, I'm okay. I play video games. Hey, whatever <laughs> helps. Okay. Must be the new generation. I killed many people on TV yeah. in a video game, so if they <laughs> off themselves right in front of me, I'm fine. It, in the video game world, I'm somewhat of a masketeur. <laughs> but no, like this guy, this guy, he can't find his way to wait out of a wet paper sack, though. Like he's, we'll be is on... this the 33 year old? Yes. I, I love him already because that's how old I was when I started. Just yeah, so you know. I'm, I'm on board with it. Like, let's go, dude. Yeah. But we're on like a major north south street. I'm like, all right, cool. What direction are we going? Yeah. South. Wrong. Don't. We're going north. What direction do we need to be going? South. We need to be going south. Cool. We should probably turn around then, right? Because we have a prisoner in the back of our car. And oh, if we no. decide to drive him to a whole other city, I'm going to get real mad real fast. And then one day my back was a little tight. Yeah. And I told him, like, look, man, I don't want you to ever get in a wreck, but especially today because my back hurts. So that's my number one rule. We are not getting <laughs> in an crash accident. Don't shit. And you know what he does? He got in an accident. He almost got into an accident, but not just any accident. An accident where my side of the car would have been T-boned. Oh, boy. That's not yeah. good. After he had already missed his turn to the call twice on a very, very chill call. Yeah, that's not good at all, dude. Yeah, so I kicked him out of the driver's seat. I can't, oh, just get out. Time for me to get drive. Out. Yeah, that's just pull in the parking lot. Stop the car. Get out. I almost hit two people walking a dog the other day. <laughs> 
they were each walking a dog, so it would have, I would have killed two people and their dogs because it was at the it was at the it wasn't at the end of that eighteen hour day, but what I thought would be fun is instead of driving all the way home thirty miles and getting you know two hours of sleep to drive back and work another twelve after eighteen, I thought I'll get a hotel room at the place I used to work security at because I get a discount rate and it's right yeah. in town and I can sleep for maybe five hours. Which I would have done the same thing. Right? Way better. Well, then, so I go in there at 1 o'clock in the morning, and I tell the girl, hey, man, I need a room from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. Now, no hotels work that way. No. You check in at whatever, 3 in the afternoon until the next day or whatever. So she goes, okay. So she puts me in the computer and it gives me my key at like 1 in the morning. I was so tempted because I still had... 12 hours to go after I already worked six, you know, whatever it was, six hours, seven hours. I was so tempted to go up in the room then, <laughs> like sleep. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, okay, so I got the key, and then work goes on. And at 1 o'clock, I, 1 in the afternoon, after the 18, I drive to the hotel. I go up to the room and take a shower and fall on the bed. And I'm like, I'm going to at least get four and a half hours of sleep. And then within 20 minutes, I get... Housekeeping. Housekeeping. I'm thinking Tommy boy right off the bat. You want me to wake you pee pee? What kind of hotel is this? I'm like, no housekeeping. I don't need a I yell at the door. I'm barely awake. Okay. She goes away. There's like 30 minutes later. The phone rings in the room. That's like 2.15. <laughs> the fucking phone's ringing. I pick it up. Hello. Yes, sir. Do you need a later checkout? Checkout. I just got in. I'm not leaving. I got the room from one to seven. I'm yelling at this poor desk clerk person. I'm a police officer here. I need to sleep. She's like, sorry, <laughs> click, hangs up. I slept two hours. God damn it. Next time I'm just driving home. I would say, well, at least you didn't have to drive and maybe crash. <laughs> oh, so yeah. So then that night, I go back to work two hours, two and a half hours of sleep. Later on that night at about one in the morning, for whatever reason, some people are walking their dogs past the police department. Uh, we, I pull in on the driveway for the firehouse and uh, not even paying attention because I'm fucking tired. I zoom in and just, I never saw them. They just passed my path and I almost killed them. And I just kept driving because I didn't want to stop because they were going to fucking yell at me. <laughs> Maybe they thought I was in an emergency or something, but oh my God, dude, it scared the shit out of me. Yes, yeah, so we just hit your lights real quick and like speed off. <laughs> So, and once you're out of cycle, holy crap. I, my heart was in my throat. Oh, yeah. So you, you got to the, he saw a dead guy. He drives really slow, like, like he's driving Miss Daisy. Yep. What else happened? Well, you know, we did catch a, uh, a robbery suspect, and oh, that was nice. Nice. Um, would have liked to have seen him actually grab a hold of the guy. How did you catch him? Well, our partner showed up as he was walking away from us. Your partner showed up? Yeah. After of, the bad of, guy was walking away from you? From from my rookie. Why was he walking away? Where did you I see him? So he's a robbery suspect. Strong yes, arm robbery? So, arm robbery? Yeah, well, like an attempted purse, purse snatch. Oh, okay. So and he's off his rocker, some homeless dude, and he's hanging out in front of the convenience store that this just happened. And this never happens, and Mike, you can attest to this, where the description of the person matched 100%. And not only that, he was standing in the exact place they said he was. <laughs> yeah. Like, you talk about putting it up on a tee and going, right. all right, yeah. just hit it. Nice. Just crush this. So we pull into the parking lot. He, like, wants to stop, like, 50 to 75 feet away. I'm like, no, no. Gun it. Drive right, right up, up on him, him. Yeah. right up on him, Scare hit your lights, out jump out of the car, announce yourself with some fucking authority, and say, come here. He, uh, he's like trying to like make freaking small talk. Like, hey, sir, what's going on? Like, what's going on? He's a freaking robbery suspect, and he's walking away from me right now. Do something. Did he taste Get it? him. Hit him. Hit, hit him. him hard. Was the woman, the complainant, still around? 
Yeah, she was. She was hiding inside of the convenience store. Did she point to him when you pulled up? She didn't need to. <laughs> well, the, subscript, the description I've, matched. But. I have never had it happen like that. <laughs> never had it where it was, I mean, no doubt. Like the description was dead. Like they stood there and was like, yep, he's this, 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 and this. He's wearing that, that, and this. Wow. H- including his shoes. I'm like, this is perfect. Yeah. You must so have really walking. good dispatchers. We do. I'll get to we that do. later. And then... So like he's starting to walk away, and like I'm to the point where like I'm just gonna go tackle this dude. Like, no, if you, you're not gonna Brandon, do it, I'm gonna go. Mister three and a half years on the job, don't tackle people. You push them from behind so they fall and get hurt, and you don't. Yeah, and then I'm gonna stumble on top of him and maybe drop down the people's elbow on him. You can do the people's elbow, yes, but do yeah. not tackle anybody. No, no, no. But the way you articulate is, I tackled him. I didn't push him. I didn't shove him. That could hurt him. I tried to tackle him. Then we go down together. Control it. Control takedown. Control Come on, takedown. Mike. Shit's chest, not checkers. So one of my partners comes pulling in, and I just get on the radio. I go, that's the guy right there. Hit him. Yeah, get him. <laughs> yeah, he jumps out of the car, boom, pins him up against there, and then my guy jumps in. He's like, ah, get your arm. I'm like, you <laughs> fucking pussy. <sighs> Does this guy know that you have a podcast? No, he's not going to. <laughs> Someone in the department's going to tell him. Yeah, probably. I don't care. Yeah, okay. Tell him hi. Hey. Say hi. Hi, dude. Hi, dude. Be better. <laughs> Be better or get another job. Yeah. I t- well, I told him, like, dude, you, you did shit or get off the pot time. Like, you need to either improve or start thinking about another career. You know what I like to do when I have rookies that are slow like that? I go to the McDonald's and get a bunch of applications, and I leave one in their mailbox. <laughs> Just They come into work. They check their mailbox. There's an application for a McDonald's. I'm like, dude, you are better you, check that opportunity out. Are you kidding me? I would get fired for hazing. Your department sucks. Other no. than the fact that you have every tool imaginable and like the, 400 people. The political pressure of my state sucks. Yeah. So. See, we can still have fun like that. Yeah. No, we can. I mean. Oh, I think. We, I, we find ways to have fun. But yeah, no, this week was, I mean, it was a lot of fun stuff that I would have loved to have gone to without somebody else there. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Especially with the patrol team I have, because we would have done some absolute work and yeah. taken a lot of bad guys off the street. But, you know, these guys need to learn. And we have, on my team, we have uh, three uh, three boots out of the academy that are in their third rotation of, of training. And then okay. we have a, a lateral that just started. So, Oh, nice. Where did he come from? Uh, he came from uh, another county up in San Mateo. Oh, he's a county deputy or is he a city officer? No, he was a deputy. Okay. So I don't know how much street time he actually has, but you know, his one week of actually doing stuff's been decent. Oh, good. So how was uh, how was your time, Mike? Oh. I, I think I've monopolized enough time. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, on the heels of that eighteen-hour day, I was I think we were talking about how our the shifts our rookies work when we were on our on the pre-show. Yeah. And uh, so they worked. Only eight hours, they come in at 11. So the day I got held over, <laughs> my buddy who was running the next shift, because the sergeant was off, he looks over at me and he's like, uh, we got the rookie coming in at 11. And he's looking right at me. I'm like, because they have no other FTOs <laughs> on that shift because the guys that are FTO are off. And I'm like, put him with me. I'll take him. I love rookies. And plus it's only going to be for like three hours from 11 to 1. Oh, and then yeah. – the other guy on my shift who's getting forced back to work 18, Geo, he's also an FTO. So he's going to get stuck with them. When he, you don't have this yet happen to you, but when you're an FTO and you come in and they go, you've got a rookie today. Motherfucker. <laughs> you've got no, you have no plans. There's no mental you know, like preparation. It just gets thrown in your face. So I didn't mind it, them telling, or me volunteering four hours before he came in to take him for three hours. I don't care. I'll take him. But I was just thinking about poor Gio when he comes in on his, you know, three and a half hours of sleep after working 12 to come in and work 18. And they go, you've got a rookie for six hours. He's like, God damn it. I hate all of you so much. Yeah. <laughs> so I got to ride with the rookie for a while. And uh, it wasn't very long because we got in the car. He's not driving yet because he's just literally started last week. So we oh, start wow. driving around. And I like to ask him, why are you doing this? What do you want out of this career? You know, all that kind of stuff. And we get a call right away at the tow yard for some, the tow company that uh, we use as a contractor, they're fantastic. 
and uh, they feed us for Christmas and stuff and all that stuff. We have a really good relationship, but they had some customer whose car was stolen in the city. So his car gets stolen in Chicago. Chicago recovers it. They bring it to one of their pounds. They contact him to pick it up. He calls the pound yard. It got stolen from the pound yard. <laughs> it's stolen a second time. Then county finds it, Cook County finds it, and they contact this tow company because this tow company also has a contract with them. So the tow company goes all the way into the city, picks up the car, brings it back to their yard. Now they, got, now they send a letter to the guy and to the lien holder that they have the car. Yeah. Certified letter. Now the guy calls the tow company basically and says, I want my car for nothing because it was stolen from me. I shouldn't have to pay you. And she's like, that's not how this works. You have to pay us to get your car out, which is unfortunate for anybody that has had this happen to them. You get your car stolen twice. Usually it's damaged. And then you have to pay a tow company, right, to get your car back. It's kind of you get unless, fucked. Unless you can come get it from the scene. Or your insurance company pays for it, which they're supposed to, if you have insurance. This guy's got like a 2016 something or other, and he apparently he doesn't have insurance. So now he owes the tow company $3,500. So he's pissed. So he's called numerous times, and now they're in a verbal fight on the phone. He's also from like the west side. West side! So he ain't putting up with no bullshit. And he tells her, I will come there and ruin you. <laughs> I will take you out of your misery. He threatens her on the phone. She's like, well, fuck you. You can't have your car. So she's yelling at him. So then they, the, he calls once again. So we go over there with the rookie, and she tells me all this shit that's happened. I'm like, all right. So she, I said, you want to file a report for harassment against him? Because he's called like a numer- number of times. She's like, yeah, I don't really want to sign complaints, though, but tell him. She says, at one point, I just wanted to give him his fucking car to get it out of my yard. I don't need a headache. But then county told her, you're going to be admitting fault for something if you give him his car, whatever their bullshit is. He, she can do whatever she wants. It's a private business, right? Yeah. So she says, you know what? Just tell the guy, give me $1,000 and come get his car. So I call the guy on the phone, go back to the station, call him up. I'm on the phone with this guy for like 45 minutes. Jeez. Just trying to calm him down for one. It's about 40 minutes too long. Yeah, and I have a number of friends that would have said, you owe them, you know, Eighteen hundred dollars or whatever. So I said, "Listen, you want your car back? They want a thousand dollars. Otherwise, you're shit out of luck. Goodbye. Click." So, but you know, I want to kind of teach the rookie that we are in the personal service business as well. You know what I mean? You don't have to be so rude well, all to the time. a degree. Yeah, and plus, I was at the end of my eighteen-hour shift. I ain't going anywhere. <laughs> so that's true. You know, I had time to talk. So I finally got the guy to calm down. Let him know I knocked off. I knocked off. You know. Some money off his toe. I did you a (laughs) solid, my friend. I don't even need a percentage of it. Just don't cause trouble when you come to my town to pick up your fucking car. So anyways, I had the rookie for three hours, and we had to work on this one report. So that was it was fun to get to meet him, uh, get to talk to him, get to ride with him for a while, give him a few tips and uh, pointers, and uh, he seems like he's going to be pretty good. After one week, he's got his head straight, you know, screwed on pretty good. So he already knows most of the streets. He's driving around on his own time, learning the learn in the city before he comes to work and then after. So that's a good I wish thing. my guy would do that. <laughs> you can tell the ones that do. And I told him, like, dude, if you want this job, like, you better put in some extra effort because <laughs> right now, <laughs> the job don't want you. Yeah, well, that sucks. Uh, let's see. We had a rollover d- uh, fatal. Um, oh, we had a guy crossing the street from his condo to go to a bar, and he got hit by... We had hit and run fatal guy. I saw the videotape guy going eastbound. He guy wants to cross the street from south side to north side. It's a four lane road. He looks west for cars coming eastbound. There's like one car comes. It's 30 miles an hour. Another car comes. He sees nobody. Well, just west of there, there's a viaduct that goes under the road, goes under the train tracks. Hmm? So he looks to his, looks west. There's nobody coming. He's walking on an angle across the street. And I don't know. Within a few seconds, he gets to the middle lane, and this guy had to be doing 70 miles an hour. Fucking hits him. Pinwheels him. He goes, pinwheels, he goes about, I don't know, 60 feet in the air. Pinwheeling nice. about 18 yeah. to 20 feet high. And then the guy took off, you know. So 
Uh, saw the video of that. Well, yeah, he's drunk. He's most likely drunk. Also speeding, of course. Uh, they find his car. Chicago finds his car. He burned his car in the city. Set it on fire. There's video of him all the way down. We ne- I don't know if they've recovered any now of him in the vehicle, like from red light cameras and stuff. But they, they got the car at all these different businesses that the detectives went out and pulled video cameras from all the way down to where the car was found, you know, on fire. So that was an interesting case. I brought the rookie into the firehouse where we kept the car so that uh, my buddy can process it as the ET and get the black box out and stuff. But since it wasn't a really bad impact, there might not be damage or there might not be something registered on the black box, you know, from the impact because it was like a glancing blow. So he got to see that kind of stuff, that was, which was pretty cool. Uh, let's see, I had a call for a German Shepherd running around by the hotel. I went over there. It was a wolf. Or a fucking coyote, whatever the hell it was. I said, lady, that's not a fucking German Shepherd. Don't go near it. That's a, that's a coyote. It wants to eat you. Oh, he's a sweet boy. <laughs> he's a sweet boy. Um, then I, I, we had a call the other day of a, a domestic involving uh, some, a male and a female from the city. And uh, the guy said she had a gun. So my battery is, like, really bad on my radio after 12 hours. And this is the day I'm staying, you know, the 18 hours. So... It's like 7.05 in the morning, and I haven't changed out my battery yet. Note to people that have to work long shifts with a portable radio. When you go in for roll call between shifts, please please change your battery because this is what happens. Swap it out. Yeah, swap it out because this is what happens. We get the call of the domestic in progress, and the guy on the phone says, his girl got a gun, and he gives a full description of her, and she got a gun. Well, I'm the first one there. I'm flying up on scene. I'm at it's at a local piece of shit motel. I pull into the lot, and I can see her right in front of me. I fucking I come flying up on her. I go to grab my radio. Bleep bleep, bleep bleep. I got yeah. no fucking. Tra- I can't transmit even if I was getting shot at. So as I'm coming up to her and I can't transmit, I pull my phone out of my pocket and I'm like trying to call the dispatch center while I'm keeping my eyes on her and driving the car. At a high rate of speed, and I'm looking for her to pull her, pull her hands out of her pockets, you know. And I'm like, I'm on the phone. I'm I'm here. Clay, I just dropped my phone on the car. Jump out of the car, and then the other guys show up. And of course, as most of the time with these assholes, uh, right away she she just freezes when I come up on her, and I tell her uh, put she was carrying a bag. So put your bag on the ground. Don't make any movements. She's like, okay, no problem. And then I search her real quick. And she's like, I ain't got no weapon, you know. I'm like, okay, well, I don't know that. Just making sure. I search her coat and her bags and everything. She's got no fucking gun. He's like 15 feet away from me talking to my buddies. And, of course, he said that she had a gun, so it would expedite us getting there, right? Don't you love it when they do that? Oh, yeah. And I also, not only that was the issue, but he fucking... Beat her pretty good. She had blood on her face, and she was a mess. She had blood on her clothes. So we got to book him not only for the domestic battery, which she wanted to sign complaints for, but uh, for the uh, false report, you know, the false 911 call, which was yeah. good Good to get him on that. And then, you know, we worked uh, New Year's Eve pretty quiet. I'm very happy to say that uh, I was dreading working New Year's Eve the whole week. <laughs> and yeah, we didn't have much shit. There was a DOA we had. Uh, we had two guys on New Year's Eve from one's from Alabama, one's from Wisconsin. They worked for Verizon and they work up on the cell towers doing the 5G stuff. So the guy from Alabama, he's the employee. The guy from Wisconsin's the boss. So they're in one of our bars that we always have trouble at and they start a fight. The, the employee starts a fight with the employee, the boss. And, and the, dis, uh, the uh, bouncers go, not in here you don't. Get the fuck out. They don't call us unless it's absolutely necessary. So they go, you guys fight out there. <laughs> no fighting in the bar. You want to fight, fight in the parking lot. But if you go near the street, which is a four-lane, you know, 45-mile-an-hour road, we're going to have to call the police. While the fight spills out towards the road, like they're right next to the road. So dispatch, they call dispatch for us. We get there, and uh, G- G- Drew... Tells they're fighting. They break him up, and uh, he grabs the, the boss, and uh, the guy says, don't fucking touch me, and he starts walking away from Drew. So Drew's like, I'm going to fucking tase you in two seconds, and the guy stops. Wrong answer. Yeah. 
<laughs> so then he's all pissed off that he would, we threatened to taser him. And Drew, he goes, hey, what kind of world is this where you can just go around and threaten to taser people? I'm like, it's called being the police. <laughs> Don't listen. Like you say, fuck around and fuck find around, out. Find out. Find out. That's what we can do. So this hillbilly from Alabama, he's got hunting coveralls on with, the, with camouflage coveralls. <laughs> coveralls in the bar. He, he's got a beard like Jonathan Beck. He's, oh, good. He's nice. A, and he's a big dude. And uh, he is a, just, we have to send him to the hospital and because he's completely hammered. And at one minute he's crying, and the next minute he's, you know, laughing, and then he's crying, and he's being nice. So we end up calling the ambulance down, and they, they're they like, what the fuck are we down here for? And I go, that's your guy right there. He needs to go to the hospital. He's highly intoxicated. So, like, get up. And he's like, I need to talk to an Al- I need to talk to a police officer from Alabama. And I'm in the background going, roll tide. And he's like, you know, and, and he gets all. Hell yeah, brother. He's, yeah, roll tide. And then I go, Auburn Tigers. He's like, fuck you, Auburn. <laughs> fuck it. I, the firemen looked at me and they're like, why are you? Stop fucking with this guy. Just let him, let him do whatever he wants to do. Stop. We just need to get him on the bus, which is the ambulance. So. He's still handcuffed, and my buddy Mike uh, from the paramedics starts pushing him down the hallway, and the guy's resisting, so Mike's like, gives him this huge push out the side door. Guy, I thought he was going to face plant right in the parking lot because it's a drop-off when he come out the side of the building. He makes it, jumps out. He's in the parking lot, still handcuffed. He didn't fall. We're like, we just need you to get in the ambulance. He walks up to the ambulance, turns around with his back, towards the side door of the ambulance and he's going to jump up backwards into the ambulance. He's he, he goes to jump up, misses, boom, right on the ground. So we all just stood around him and watched him as he's just laying there on the ground. And Brandon's taking a piss. So we will pick that up after in one second. Still here. Brandon's peeing. So after he misses jumping up backwards into the ambulance while he's handcuffed and crashes down on the ground, we're all standing around looking at him laughing. Then the paramedics pick him up. They end up handcuffing this guy in the ambulance, and now Drew has to follow him to the hospital because he's being combative. And I thought, uh, I'm sure security is going to have fun with him when he gets to the hospital. And I asked Drew when he got back, you know, was he a, first of all, it's not our jurisdiction. So anything happened, they have to call that police department. But uh, being from Alabama, we didn't think he uh, would get along with uh, certain security guards over there. And uh, Hmm. he actually was like. And why is that, Mike? (laughs) I don't know. It's just one of those, what do you call those things when someone predisposes something without even knowing what they're talking about? Is it a prejudice? Yeah, you'd think he would be prejudiced because he's from the Deep South, right? Because those assholes are down there. But yeah, he, that's he, true. He asked one of the security guards, he's like, he, Drew said, the guy asked him, are you, he says to the security guard, are you black? And the security oh, guard's shit. like, <laughs> and the security guard goes, yeah. And he goes, you're my brother. Protect me. And he's like, hold, hold my hand. <laughs> this big 280-pound redneck. <laughs> Holding the hand, my hand, man. Hold security my hand. hand because he's afraid of us white people. That's fucking hilarious. Uh, I guess well, true. I mean, us, us white people are pretty terrible. Yeah. So that's it, man. I had some other stuff which we'll get to later, but uh, it was a it was a long three weeks, lots of work, a couple seventy hour plus work weeks in there, and uh, some forced eighteen hour shifts. So glad it's over. Yeah, I think I only had a couple of a uh, 
15 hour days with report writing and yeah my, my guy taking five hours to write a domestic violence case same guy yeah yeah so he so he's dedicated to me for four weeks okay just want to make sure so yeah so unless he bangs out sick or i bang out sick it's gonna be fun gonna, it is it is there, we i've still been able to have some fun with it but good at the same time there's there is a lot of frustration of like you should be way further ahead and it's not just him like it's all three of the of the boots from the academy are okay i i would say not performing where they should be oh well, time to kick him in the ass yeah, so I this last week they all kind of got a wake up call of like, hey, um, get your shit together, or um, McDonald's is hiring. Yeah, how many months in are they? Like eight weeks in? No, they're like eighteen, or no, they're like uh, nine or ten weeks in because they're in their cause the first rotation is six weeks. Okay, then then four weeks in second, and then four weeks in third, and then two weeks of oh, your uh, plain okay. clothes so evaluation. So they're like four weeks for, away from being cut if they do everything right. Yeah. Yeah. So they have to be, they should be way more ahead. Yeah. They're they're going to get extended. Okay. That's not a so, good thing. Nope. But it's, it's becoming more and more common. Like, it seems like starting with my class, I think we were the last class below 50% being extended. Oh. All right. So... Well, well, we, uh, I, other than the rookie that we, that's now currently in FTO, yesterday on Sunday, uh, the, th- what is that, the third? Yesterday the third or second? I don't even know what day it is. Yeah, it was the third. On Sunday the third, they had a special. Well, it's still the third here. Oh, it's not. <laughs> For oh, me, it is. shit, it's already the fourth here. All right, anyways, on Sunday the third, they swore in um, a new guy who's going to be going to the academy today, started the academy on, on Monday today. And uh, they were they retested, and then they had four people pass the physical test, and then out of those four, two failed, one took another job, so they're down to this one more person who started the academy. So, I don't think I'll ever see the guy when by the time he's on the street because, you know, he's going to be in the academy for fourteen weeks. Yeah, and then well, you you should hope that you don't see him. <laughs> Because well, that means everything has gone kind of according to plan, and you can retire, and you can be yeah. enjoying your new ventures. Right. Or, yeah, maybe I'm on days doing trucks. Cause the or maybe you're on days doing trucks. And FTOing. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Who knows? The possibilities are endless. Yeah. So, for some news stories, got some news for you, Brandon. It's not breaking news. But it is kind of... Late breaking. Late breaking news. Chromosome missing. <laughs> you think? See, that's a nice way to say retarded. Okay, chromosome missing. <laughs> I, when you said you wanted to write the uh, the episode, I'm like, great. I just want to talk about this one story, and I sent it to you. And I'm going to say that's... this person's name because I don't really go for care. it. You know way more about these people than I do. I, I had to look up what an alderman is. Yeah, it's essentially a city council member. Correct. Each ward has an alder person, alderman, alder person, if they're women, whatever. And then Stupid. if there's complaints in those neighborhoods, then those there's committees and they go see these aldermen who then bring these problems to the mayor. So Ward 43, I don't know anything about the city where these wards are. I know Drew would know what this is because he's a city boy. But um, there's this woman called, not called, named Michelle Smith. And she spells her name with only one L, by the way. Which is yeah, I, I, I noticed that. Right off the bat, that's a warning sign. So <laughs> Chicago is had nearly 800 homicides, and the carjackings have to be over 1,500 or some, I mean, crazy amount of, they're carjacking people in broad daylight. It makes Oakland's 135 homicides look like nothing. Oh, it's nothing. And Matter of fact, one of the Cook County judges just got carjacked with her three-year-old kid in the car. She was pulling into her garage, and two guys got out, put guns to her head, got her out of her car. They let her take her kid out of the car, and then they drove off. Well, um, I mean, they're not monsters. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, it's, and, and then one of our senators, state senators, got carjacked two weeks ago. Her husband, apparently, this is a woman who wants to defund the police, And how's that working out for you? She gets carjacked, and her husband's a concealed carry permit holder and throws, exchanges gunfire with these guys. All right, get after it. I'm just... I mean, hit your target, but get after it. I mean, 
We want I, these he, people who want the police to go away to keep being victims, not to be hurt. I don't want anyone to be hurt. But if you keep saying defund the police, uh, you deserve to be carjacked. And these judges that are letting these criminals out in Cook County with no concern for any safety, this was one of them. And now she just had a gun put to her head and her car stolen. So, anyway, I don't think they deserve that, but well, I understand the sentiment. Yeah. The sentiment. So, this Words person, Michelle Smith, this dumb dumb. Let's say the, the article starts out let's say you live in a neighborhood that's seen a significant surge in armed robberies during which offenders were targeting up to eight people at a time. Frequently. That's impressive. Yeah, it that's is. That's impressive. You can rob eight people at a time, like. You're good. Frequently pistol whipping their victims and even firing shots at some during crimes. This woman here, basically, here's what she wants you to do. She, they're going to hand out whistles. Well, a limited number. I limited mean. number of whistles. And they want you, when you see a crime happening, you're supposed to blow this whistle and run towards the robber. No, you're supposed to call. You're supposed oh. to call the police and then blow and your whistle. Blow and your run whistle and it. run towards the, the robbers. Or their well, car. Mike, what, Mike if, if say you don't see it, but you hear a whistle, what should you do? <laughs> Call the police. Well, no, no, no. You've already like the first whistle is is already indicated. I've called the police, but you hear that whistle. What 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 does Miss uh, what is it? Short. Mrs. Smith wants you to Smith. run Smith toward the robbery to while blowing a whistle to attract attention. So more so more whistles. More whistles. All right. The whistles are are today's cowbell. Good luck to anyone and everyone who tries it. This is called the Whistle Stop Program. She's bringing back the Whistle Stop Program, which I'll she said back. helped fight crime in Lincoln Park during the 1970s. Now, now Mike, um, I wasn't around in the 70s, so... I was. I, I, I don't know, but was gun violence in Chicago as bad no, in the 70s? No, and this says... The 50-year-old program was used decades before people could just simply call 911 <laughs> from their pocket phone. Huh. Hmm. There are some so, rules. Oh, oh. Let's, we've got to have rules. Let's hear the rules. The Whistle Stop program follows these rules, Smith wrote in her December 22nd email. If you find yourself in a suspicious situation or witness a crime, blow your whistle. If you hear a whistle... Call the police, then move toward the source while blowing your own whistle. Just pray the crime does not involve a group of armed men who won't hesitate to whack you square in the face with their handguns. Or worse, that's what the reporter writes. But she mm -hmm. says it allows people to come to the victim's aid, forces the offender to flee, and helps the police pinpoint the location of the crime, which we could just get when we get dispatched there anyways. <laughs> Wait, exactly hey, hey, where did it happen? Happened? Where's the whistleblower? I need a whistleblower. I, you can't, victim, you can't tell me where you were. I need a whistleblower to tell me where you were. So um, I, I think most people are smart enough, but uh, just in case somebody's not, please, for the love of God, don't do this. Don't. I love this reporter. He says, it's not clear why Smith believes that a group of armed men who aren't afraid to rob five or eight people at a time would suddenly flee upon seeing someone arrive blowing a whistle. <laughs> I mean, oh, it would shit. scare the shit. There's the whistle. The out of me. Let's get the fuck out of here. We got to go. A more likely outcome might be that the robbery of five or eight or three would become a robbery of six or nine or four. <laughs> uh, That's then, what they would do. They're, the they're last gonna... thing she says. Yeah. Side alignment, course, side picture. Side smooth side trigger picture. pull. Yeah. Of course, use common sense. Do not blow your whistle if you think to do so would put yourself in danger, particularly from an armed criminal, she warned. Dude, I, I'm done with these so, people. So participate within this program, but don't do it, is, is what, essentially what she said. Right. Dude, I can't anymore. Uh, I, I, just I just want to take a second. Everyone makes fun of California for our bullshit. <laughs> yeah. That is some next level bullshit. It is. Some, All right. I, I couldn't believe it when I saw it on the news. I, <laughs> I, I just couldn't. I had to share it because That's, I'm leaving my gun at home and bringing a whistle with me from now on. Yeah, absolutely. Fuck yeah. I don't need a gun. I got a whistle. No, a whistle. I actually have a whistle on my coat. My friends hate it because I'm constantly. It's like my rape whistle. 
It's in the zipper. I don't know. It was my grandpa's coat. He died. I took his <laughs> coat. Like, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know how to get rid of it. So I could have a you know, memory of him, and it's got the whistle there, and I blow it and constantly piss off my, my shift mates. <laughs> oh, you're just the worst. Yeah. So you said that um, Kevin Nishida's Nishida. murderer. Yeah, they were caught. That's yeah, the guy so, who was uh, on. Yeah, that's the uh, security. security yeah, security guy working for one of the local news stations. Um, that was murdered in Oakland. Uh, he had a lot of ties to Bay Area law enforcement. I think he worked for like four or five different agencies, including the one I work for. Um, the entire Bay Area law enforcement community was looking for this car. And uh, the uh, U.S. Marshals were able to take two guys into custody, and uh, they went to jail wearing Kevin's cuffs. So, Oh, that's awesome. That's very so they cool. are, and they were able to pull that off before Christmas for uh, for his family. So that was a nice little. That's a good Christmas gift. Yeah, a nice little thing that. I mean, no, it doesn't bring him back, but it's at least something uh, you get a little bit of closure out of it. Yeah. Now, if they can just sentence him to death, would be great. That be, I'd be fine with that. Yeah. Old Sparky, I mean, do you guys have a? Do you have a death? I think it's no, because Newsom got rid of it. Or he did a, a moratorium on it. Like I think it's still on the books because the voters, like California voters, we still haven't repealed it. Okay. And when that happened, Newsom's like, "Well, we're not going to put anybody to death. I'm going to put a moratorium on it." I'm like, mm. then what's the point of voting? Right. If you're just going to do what you want, anyways, that's going to get me on a whole different, okay, <laughs> whole well, different I'm, soapbox. I'm glad to see that they caught these two shit bags, two white guys. Okay. <laughs> Not that it matters. A bad guy's a bad guy. In uh, Oakland. All for nothing, too. Just bullshit is what they did. Yeah, they didn't even get the fucking cameras. No, they wanted to steal their cameras. Uh, and now their life's over. Yeah. All right. So we haven't recorded since the 15th of December, and there have been a number of police officers that have died in the line of duty. And I meant, I want to apologize. I meant to do a in memoriam and name off all the police officers who died in uh, 2021. And I just didn't have the opportunity to, I'm not going to say I didn't have time, but it is a time consuming event. Well, yeah, so, that's, I mean, what, 322 names. Yeah. So uh, I apologize for those of you that wanted to hear that. Uh, if you need to see that uh, the list of everyone who passed away in 2021, you can go to the Officer Down Memorial page, and that covers most of them. They us usually do a pretty good job. So we're going to pick up from December 15th, and I will talk about the officers who have passed since then, since that's the last time that we recorded. I still have the news going. It's just, just on a loop. <laughs> yeah. It was looping. All right. From the Chandler, Arizona Police Department, Police Officer Jeremy Martin Wilkins, end of watch Friday, December 17th, 2021, from... COVID. COVID has claimed way too many people. Saturday, December 18th, Louisville Metro Police Department, Police Officer Zachary Dale Cottingen. His end of watch was due to being struck by a vehicle. Police Officer Zachary Cottingham was struck and killed by an automobile as he attended to an abandoned vehicle on the side of I-64 near the Melwood Avenue exit. He was standing on the side of the highway when he was struck by a passing vehicle. He had served the Louisville Metro Police Department for seven years. He is survived by his wife and two children. He was 29 years old. Wisconsin Department of Military Affairs, Volk Field Security Forces of Wisconsin Officer Chad P. Christensen, end of watch Saturday, December 18th, 2021, from COVID-19, had served two years and was 49 
years old. Haverford Township Police Department in Pennsylvania, Sergeant Kevin D. Redding, end of watch Monday, December 20th, 2021, also from COVID-19. Sergeant Redding was 53 years old and had served 27 years for his police department. Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department in North Carolina, Police Officer Mia Danielle Figueroa Goodwin, end of watch Wednesday, December 22nd, 2021. Police Officer Mia Figueroa Goodwin was killed when a tractor trailer struck her patrol car on southbound I-85 near W.T. Harris Boulevard. She was blocking traffic on the interstate at the scene of a previous crash when the tractor trailer struck her patrol car at about 3.30 a.m. She served with the police department for over six years and was assigned to the University City Division. She is survived by her husband and three children, ages three, one, and four months. She was 33 years old. Baltimore Police Department in Maryland, police officer... Kiona Holly. We've talked about this uh, at work. Police officer Kiona Holly succumbed to gunshot wounds sustained on December 16th, 2021, when she was ambushed in the 4400 block of Pennington Avenue. She was sitting in her patrol car at about 1.30 a.m. when two men approached from behind and opened fire, shooting her multiple times. Both men then went to another location, approximately 10 miles away, where they murdered another man who owed one of them $100. Officer Holly was transported to a local hospital where she remained in critical condition until succumbing to her wounds on December 23rd. Both suspects were arrested several days after the initial shooting and charged in connection with both incidents. Officer Holly served with the Baltimore Police Department for two years. She is survived by her four children, parents, and sister. She was 39 years old. Puerto Rico Police Department in Puerto Rico, Agent Jose Ferrer Pabon, end of watch Friday, December 24th, 2021, due to an automobile crash. Agent Jose Ferreira Pabon was killed in a vehicle crash on PR 110 near Rafael Hernandez Airport in Puerto Rico at about 12.30 a.m. He was returning to the station at the end of his shift when an oncoming vehicle traveling at a high rate of speed lost control and struck his patrol car head-on. Agent Ferreira Pabon and both occupants of the other vehicle were killed in the collision. He was assigned to the Stolen Vehicles Division. He was 44 years old. They do not have the uh, time of his employment. Hudson County Sheriff's Office in New Jersey, Lieutenant Matthew A. Vogel, end of watch December 27th, 2021, from COVID-19. Lieutenant Vogel was 50 years old and had served 22 years with his department. Wilkes-Barre Police Department in Pennsylvania, Sergeant Christopher Mortensen, end of watch December 27th, 2021, from COVID-19. Sergeant Mortensen was 45 years old, had served 20 years with his police department. He is survived by his wife and son. Amarillo Police Department in Texas, Corporal Mike Sanchez, End of watch Monday, December 27th from COVID-19. Corporal Sanchez was 45 years old, had served 16 years with the Amarillo Police Department, and he is survived by his wife and five children. Wayne County Sheriff's Office here in Illinois. Deputy Sheriff Sean Riley. End of watch December 29th. 2021, 
cause was gunfire. Deputy Sheriff Sean Riley was shot and killed after responding to assist a motorist near mile marker 115 on I-64 at about 5 a.m. Another officer responding to back him up found him suffering from fatal gunshot wounds and his patrol car was missing. The subject later abandoned the patrol car on I-64 before fleeing to St. Peter's, Missouri, where he carjacked and shot a citizen. The men... The man then abandoned the vehicle before stealing another vehicle and returning to Illinois. He was taken into custody in the early afternoon. Deputy Riley is survived by his wife and three children. They do not give his age nor his tour of duty time. And then the last one for the year... Also, an Illinois Police Department officer, Sergeant Marlene Ritmanic from the Bradley Police Department. Her end of watch was Thursday, December 30th, 2021, due to gunfire. Sergeant Marlene Ritmanic was shot and killed as she and another officer investigated a noise complaint at the Comfort Inn. Which it was actually a dog, a barking dog call. The officers had responded to the motel at approximately 9.30 p.m. to investigate reports of barking dogs that were left unattended in a vehicle. They located the room where the vehicle's owner was staying and contacted the occupants. During the encounter, the occupants attacked and shot both officers. Sergeant Ritmatic and the other officer were transported to a local hospital in serious condition. Sergeant Ritmatic succumbed to her wounds shortly after midnight. The occupants fled the motel and were arrested approximately 36 hours later during a multi-state manhunt. The female turned herself in, and then they found the male in Indiana. Sergeant Ritmanic had served with the Bradley Police Department for 14 years and had previously served with the Iroquois County Sheriff's Office for seven years. She is survived by her wife. She was 49 years old. And that is way too many officers to end the year. 487. 487 police officers we lost in 2021. Vast majority to COVID. Very much so. And there were other officers that weren't on this list that have passed away due to work-related incidents. So yeah, these are just the ones that we were made aware of. That Bradley uh, sergeant who was murdered, her partner was also shot in the head. He's still in critical condition. And the way they got, the woman turned herself in the next day. I saw the news story. And the guy who fled to Indiana, there was a traffic stop done. I don't know if it was on a vehicle that he was driving. I think it was someone else. They, They then went to a home where they ended up like arresting seven people. For something, but, but he was the murderer was uh, in that group of seven people that they arrested. So, well, good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. No fallen canines. See, that's good. And uh, you have heroes of the week. Yeah, I'm gonna take a second, and kind of toot, not necessarily my own horn, but my team's horn. So. Uh, every year our union puts on a, uh, like a toy drive, right? They set up these big old barrels and we come drop toys off in them. And every now and then a couple of us forget to drop them in the barrels before they pull the barrels out. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so what we end up doing is we just toss them in the back of our cars and roll around with them. Well, uh, the week of Christmas, uh, my team responded to two, um, domestic violence incidents where kids were witness to it. And we, uh, we ended up taking those, those little toys that we had in the back of ours and kind of hooking them up with some, uh, with some Christmas gifts to kind of maybe make up for a, uh, what was a really shitty night for them. Yeah. Are they gift, are they gift wrapped? Like, do they, Uh, do they get to open them? Yeah. Um, when you drop them off, like in the bins, they prefer that they're unwrapped so they can wrap them, make sure they're all good and stuff. But, um, since they were just going to go in the back of ours, we just kind of wrapped them up real quick. Cool. So they got to have a 
a couple of extra presents under the tree. Good. Oh, well, God bless you for doing that. I carry um, a box of stuffed animals in my squad. So Uncle Harold has but, given them to me, a bunch of them. And I just and most like, of our cars have, have at least one stuffed animal in them in case you come across like a child victim or something like that. Yeah, child victims or I just, when I go to a call and there's kids there, if, even if they're not a victim, I like to give them the stuffed animals. So it's always good to see a kid smile. It is. It's good for the soul. Yeah. Why shouldn't we be able to do that kind of stuff? I carry blankets in the squad for homeless people in the winter and uh, stuffed animals for children. So no cost to me, right? Very minimal to make someone's day, child or adult. So uh, that ends our law enforcement portion of the show. Pew, 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 pew. On to the woodworking. Pew, pew. <laughs> It's That's my uh, power drill. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> power drill. What do you have? Do you have any like tools on your drill? Any kind of holders or anything on your impacts? I have yeah. on my on both of my impacts. I have a driver back system. Ooh, driver back. And if you don't have a driver back system on your impact driver, you're really messing up. Like you're screwing up life. Yeah. So for people that don't know, and you can watch this on YouTube. This is a driver back system. I have it right here on my my Ryobi Impact, and uh, it's, it's very ge- sleek looking. It's very sleek looking. It's a uh, genius genius invention. So you get to pick when you order it the tools that you want on there. There's one, two, three, four, and then I got this um, star bit, and then a square bit, and then two. You know. I don't know which bits you chose, but then the two, the two different size uh, Phillips screwdrivers. And it's basically, pretty much the exact same as okay, what I did. You just pull it out like that and put it in. And you're good to go. And then, yeah, it's, and then there's no losing your bits anymore. I, I have this magnetic bit holder on this damn impact right here, but they always fall off. And they, then they got the yeah, one that goes it in It doesn't the front. work for crap. So this driver back system is fantastic. And Michelle from driver back has agreed to sponsor several episodes of our show. So she's our first official sponsor other than Maraza woodworking and full house woodworking. Obviously, obviously. And, uh, <laughs> we're so excited. We're going to have her on the show. She will be, that's going to be a fun episode. She'll be a guest on the first episode that they sponsor. And I, I will get that scheduled this week. So I'm looking forward to doing that. And, Big news, she will be giving away a driver back system. Every time that they're a sponsor of the show, one person will win a driver back system. I really hope David Franklin wins one. <laughs> <laughs> like, can you imagine? He has sent in question after question and been our biggest supporter, like from a fan standpoint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we finally like get a sponsor and do a giveaway and he comes up bub kiss. <laughs> well, he's got a good chance. Because I'd David, say he's got a good chance. He does because you actually we're gonna think of something that you have to do. But even if it was sending a question, it's usually David only sending in questions. So I think we've had two people send it. Well, no, I think like maybe three or four that have actually sent in questions. Yeah. So even if we have four during these shows, that you have a twenty five percent chance at winning. Yeah. Good shot. Right. Good chance. So get your entries in when we tell you to get them in. Not. Yeah, we'll tell you. I mean, you should also send in questions. Otherwise, it's just me and Mike talking right. nonsensically. Yeah, so uh, you have some good stuff here that you have asking me uh, for this segment. Yeah, so. like, have you used your Domino yet? No, I got <laughs> really you, close. Have you, have you turned it on? Once again, no. <laughs> like, I was so excited. When I'm just I bought too it. afraid to take it out of the sustainer. I just put it up right. on the shelf and stare at it. It's actually underneath my yep. CNC table. The two sustainers, you know, are stacked together. Yeah. Because one of them's full with dominoes, different sizes. And uh, when I was doing that five-foot flag that I'm going to be delivering tomorrow, thank effing God, uh, I had to, the union was two feet long itself, right? It's huge. Oh, yeah, it's huge. And I was doing a big glue-up. I did them in panels. I glued all the long stripes together as one panel, then all the small stripes together as a panel. And then I was putting them all together, and I thought, I could really use this domino to put into the side of the union that – would touch the stars or the stripes. I mean, yeah. So I open it up and I'm like, 
this looks really confusing. There's all kinds of parts in there. <laughs> Shit's falling out. There's guides, and I'm like, oh, no. So I go on YouTube real quick and just look up the Festool Domino, and I sh- saw a video on how to change the bits, um, what, how to line shit up, and I thought, I want to get this flag done today, so I broke out the biscuit joiner. <laughs> Some, sometimes if a job's got to get done and you don't have time to kind of fiddle fuck with a, with a new machine, sometimes you just got to go to Old Faithful. Yeah, and I know had I done some research prior to getting it, I think I might have been able to, and if I had more time to finish that flag, I would have been able to brave it out and then try it. But the kicker is I finished that before Christmas, that flag, and I didn't use the domino, and I was in a hurry to get it done because they ordered it in May. So they order it in May, then I have all those problems, and I'm having to drive up to Wisconsin and ship stuff to Wisconsin, and then I, you know, um, was hurt and out of the shop for two months. I get it all done. I send an email to the chief secretary. I'm so excited. Your flag's done. And I get the old, I'm off of work till January 3rd email. <laughs> <laughs> like, son of a... We'll man. see you we'll next see year. See you next year. So today they actually emailed me back, and I'm going in the morning to deliver this flag to their police department. I'm very excited to get rid of it. But it would have been a great oh, yeah. candidate for the domino. Yeah. No, they're going to love that thing. I, I can't wait it. to see... I hope you get, like, uh, some sort of, like, reaction video to them opening it. Yeah, I'm going to bring a knife, like a box cutter, and go, here. <laughs> and here's a box cutter, Chief, and I'm going to sit back here at my phone and film it, and they can open it up. Because I didn't, I didn't send them final pictures of it, even though I posted yeah. it on my Instagram page. I don't think either of them look at my Instagram page, the Chief or the Secretary. I doubt it. Because I've sent them videos of the process, you know, while it was going on, just so they had an idea of what was happening. And... uh but they may, who knows, but I'm so excited. They also ordered some, now the flag is black and white. They also ordered black and white, um, like architectural plans of their building that are going to be framed up next to the flag. They Mm -hmm. thought this whole thing out. They got the wall. They're going to have extra stuff, black and white up there. I'm really excited. Yeah, it's going to be cool. And then I wrote the um, police officer's prayer, the St. Michael's police officer prayer on the back. And that was flag number 98. Getting uh, close. The cowboy flag was uh, uh, was 99. So I just got an order in for a car detailing shop next to the window tent shop I did a flag for, and that's going to be flag 100. Flag then, 100. Weren't you going to weren't you going to do something special for flag 100? I was gonna. <laughs> I won't bring up what it was. but No, yeah, I was going to offer a free flag for flag 100, but this is a big flag. So had he ordered one of the small flags, I might have done a free flag for flag 100, but it's a big flag, and it's a company flag. Okay. So not going to give it away. Yeah, I got ah. to limit that. Well, yeah, 101 will be nice. Yeah, 101. <laughs> 101. Flag. I will say that the next flag that's ordered – from my Etsy shop and soon my woodworking website, morazowoodworking.com, if some, the first customer to order a small flag on that since now, from now, will get, be free. Okay. So if you want to order a f- small flag from my Etsy shop, it's free for a limited time until January 31st. Fair, right? I think so. I don't think I have to order a flag. We need a free flag. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah, you can make your own. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> Other flag-making woodworkers do not apply. Oh. Yeah, so, um, I got to make a... What are your goals for... And I wanted to ask you, what... You know, first show of the new year. Yeah. For like only three or four days into the year. What are your goals going forward for this year? You know, it's funny. I, I finished that big-ass flag and this huge weight was taken off my shoulder because I've got so many other things I have to do. I'm, I ordered wood from our friends over there at Forest to Home, and I'll be doing some cutting boards. But I, for 2022, I have to start doing some more videos for YouTube for my woodworking stuff. That's a goal of mine is to do more content on the YouTube channel as well as uh, Instagram. And then I'd like to get us a few more sponsors for the podcast. I want to make sure, and we're pretty good up until the holidays that we were really consistent every week. So, Oh yeah. I, I listed, uh, picked a 
bunch of dates on my calendar that I want to, I want to write down and have recording dates already set like two months ahead of time, you know? So we all, we know Monday, Sunday, Monday, Sunday, we know that we know yeah. that's coming up and that will allow me to book more people for the show because we'll know, you know, February 13th. Ahead of, yeah. Yeah. We'll know way ahead of time. Yeah. So that's a goal is to concentrate more on the uh, podcast part as far as booking. I'd like to get a few more guests on than we had last year. I want to do, uh, I'd like to get a chief of police on as a guest because I want to hear what it's like to run a department from that aspect, you know, especially the one I had in mind is a friend in a uh, town over where an officer just got shot 10 times. Uh, what does your department do when something like that happens to you? So I want to get him in and speak on that matter. So business goals, I'm going to set an LLC and that will be done within the next few weeks because the money that's coming in for these next two flags, the big one and the next flag I have coming in will pay for that. So, uh, get an LLC going and then start thinking of shop expansion and my next major tool purchase, which would be a nice big jointer and Ooh. how I'm going to, where am I going to put it and how I'm going to expand my <laughs> shop. And then I was like, driving around my city and I'm like, not the town where I work, but where I live thinking, I wonder if I could find a shop that someone's renting out like a shop space, maybe yeah, like 10 by 20 or 20 by 20. Um, so I was just juggling it. Would it be worth spending rental fees for a shop or just being able to keep it here in my house and expand the basement shop? I don't know. So those are my goals. Uh, more product, more production. And for everything as far as, we know, we got the Super Bowl coming up in a month. So I want to produce bottle openers and flags for all the major things that are going on as far as sporting events and I have a whole. I have a list on my phone, Brandon. It's got to be as long as my leg of signs I want to make with the C CNC machine, movie stuff. You know, a Murdoch and Nelson lawyer sign. That's Daredevil for those of you that don't know. So just all kinds of stuff. I want to be running the CNC more every night while I'm working on other projects and just build stock up as well. That's it. That's right. Just be more productive, more times. Yeah. Well, you got to be careful with the uh, like the NFL stuff, stuff, the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. So I looked into um, like what it would take to get NFL licensing, and it's it, it's you impossible. For, it, but you can. It's, impo it's impossible for yeah. a small business. If you go on Etsy, you'll see tons of stuff that's not licensed. And then yeah, and it, gets, and it gets taken down. Uh, sometimes. If, you're, if you have a big account. Well, yeah. Be. I mean, they don't care about the guy that's not like got it listed but isn't selling shit. That'd be me. Yeah, same here. Hi. <laughs> Three sales. I'll sell it through my Facebook play. You know what I mean? I'll sell the stuff. Yeah. I just want there'll be people out there and if I can list it like the these Marvel bottle openers I'm selling. I yeah. haven't been told to stop yet. Which is kind of surprising because usually Disney is pretty on top of all of their IP, so But hey, rock it till the wheels fall off, man. Yeah, and then you know. you'll get the cease and desist letter, and then just stop. <laughs> and I just stop advertising it by still yeah, selling. Just, yeah. DM me for your private Marvel well, that's, shit. That, and that's kind of – I saw a video about a, a way that a guy kind of gets around it, and he goes, well, if they, like, say, buy the image, the NFL has gotten their, right. their cut, yeah. and then they provide the image. Well, it's their image to do with what they want. So I'm just taking their image and then putting it on – right piece i'm not charging them for the image i'm charging them for the piece exactly. and then the labor to put the image on i'm like okay that's a good argument <clears throat> so, so that's the way i kind of go about it. it's like i can put just about anything you want on there right if you if you provide me the image i'm going to act in good faith and assume that you went about obtaining it legally and didn't just pull it off of a google search like i do i actually buy them <laughs> off of etsy so well that's what i've done that with um like svg files and stuff yeah because I don't have the computer programs to be able to convert stuff, right. and nor nor do I know how to do it. I know how to drag it into Lightburn and then click trace, okay, and then and then delete the or original image, and then I have a vector file that I can yeah burn. Similar to what Vec Vectric VCarve does, as far as um, I can bring in a, any image, and it it uh, trace bitmaps it. Yeah, it's a bitmap trace, and then I can I can clean it up and move lines around if it's not sharp or whatever, and then. Or I can buy them on Etsy. 
Yeah, that's pretty interesting because almost all of those files in Etsy are like a buck. So it's, it's one of so those, stupid like, not to buy them because I don't oh, have yeah. time to sit at a computer and w- which would take me hours to convert something when I can Same here. spend 99 cents for a file on Etsy. Yeah, that's like I, I, I bought like 100 um, like SVG files for like Christmas themed and then I bought um, like monograms to put on like cutting boards and stuff. So yeah. And it was like two bucks. Oh, and I had a coupon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because two bucks wasn't cheap enough, I had to use a coupon. No, I had. Well, it was gonna expire, so I was like, "Well, I'll just get a bunch of SVG files That's and knock off like thirty percent." So I'm gonna I'm gonna get a branding iron for my new logo because it's my final logo. That's why I hadn't gotten one previously. Branding iron, a Harvey miter gauge, a jointer. I hope I get all that stuff soon, and then I'm, I'm sure you can figure that out. And then I'm looking for a larger CNC table. At some point, when I expand the shop, so yeah, I was gonna say because where are you gonna put that? <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> Just hang it on the wall and let it cur- carve yeah. that way. And whatever I have to do, I'll figure. Hey, it whatever. Out. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Just make a big flip cart. This big table I'm on right now, <laughs> my outfeed table. I'll just use it. I'll put my CNC machine right here and just outfeed under the CNC. Machine. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> See. Or just, or just make it a flip, a flip yeah, top. A flip top. I'll figure something out. <laughs> What about you? What kind of goals do you have going on for 2022? Uh, so for 2022, I want to do a craft show. Like that, that I want to build. Wonderful. Up, I want to build up some stock. I want to go to one of these shows yeah. and, and and see how that works for me. Um, I'd also like to partner with a local realtor um, to maybe provide him with closing gifts. So something that's kind of like a steady thing, right? That I can I can do because I mean, there's only so many flags to build. Once everyone I know has a flag, then kind of SOL. <laughs> yeah. Well, I gone to one of my realtor friends. I have two, and asked her, "Hey, would you like to do a thing where you sell a house and then you give them a cutting board that I make, and it can be personalized with their name on it and stuff?" She's like, "I don't know. I'm pe- I don't know a lot of people that do wooden cutting boards anymore." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> kind of, what kind As of opposed, to selling? To, actually, you know what? That's true because they, they do sell like these plastic cutting boards, the plastic ones. There's glass ones. Yeah. That just doesn't sound safe. Like a glass one, like that's dumb. Yeah, I'm not a fan. I think we have one in I think we actually have one in the house, but like any time I've ever seen it, I'm like, what the fuck is this? I'm like, oh, it's a cutting board. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah. That that's a hazard. Yeah. So it's a trip to the ER. I have done those engraved housing house pictures for a realtor friend. Where they give me an image and then I make it into engrave it on a piece of wood and frame it and then they can hang it on the wall. That's, that's something I kinda want to do. Oh yeah, that's, that's something I want to do with the laser. Is see, um, it's kind of the next step for me is to see about engraving actual like photos because there's ways to do it. I just right. don't know how to do it. Um, but I'm going to kind of fiddle fart with that a, a little bit and see if I can do that because even if it's just going out to the house that somebody just bought, snap a quick picture, engrave it on some plywood, and then put a frame around it. Like no, that's exactly what it is. And you put the easy, family's easy. name on it. <clears throat> yeah, with a nice little welcome home. Yeah. So those are cool. So. So yeah, that and then I want to uh, get kind of buttoned up to be going to uh, WorkbenchCon in 2023. That'd be nice to have you there with me. Hopefully I make it down there this year still. I got my ticket, but I'm afraid of COVID's going to stop shit. Don't know. Waiting to see. I actually might have it. I'm super like lethargic and coughing all day today. <laughs> That's not good, dude. <laughs> Hey, I might have That's COVID. It's fine. It's <laughs> fine. I'm pretty sure I had it like I'm fine. Back before everything shut down, like before we knew what it was. Yeah, I so right whole after, shift had it way back then. Yeah, right right after my daughter was born, I got super sick. And I don't typically get sick very often. And uh like I had a cough, I couldn't shake it for like three weeks. Like even to the point my wife looked at me, she's like, I don't know what that is, but I don't I don't want it. Like yeah. stay away stay from away me. From me. <laughs> And then I've been fine. I've had the, what, eight or something direct contact exposures with people who had COVID, and I haven't had it since then. And yeah. Well, I don't know. I think I think it might just be a cold, because other than the, the cough, I've been fine, like no fever or anything like that. I'm kind of curious to see what happens, though. With? With COVID. Like, this oh, is like, God, this is a really fun, like. When's the next fun? variant coming out? You have more variants now? of COVID than there are in the multiverse in Marvel of Lokis. <laughs> There's going to be more variants They're gonna than there call are it actors the Loki who have played variant. Batman. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, that Loki, would be funny. Loki variant we, of COVID. We could get to a Loki variant. I'd be pretty happy. That would be pretty be funny. Like, and we're done. And <laughs> <laughs> Disney would charge them to use the Loki variant theme. They would. They would yeah. probably turn like anyone who's got COVID like can go to this one specific spot and like it's all Loki themed. <laughs> yeah. When you get your call vaccine, it, call it Loki Land. You get the horned helmet, you know. Oh yeah. And you get the vaccine. I got to go get a booster, so I'm hoping to do that next week. I'm waiting till my city mandates it because that's kind of pointless at this point. And I'm in that age group that's been getting myocarditis from the from the actual uh what's it called vaccines myocarditis what is it's it? like it enlarges like your heart wall and everything and i come from a long line of people with really bad hearts so oh, that's not good anytime i see stuff with uh like heart issues it kind of scares the crap out of me so <laughs> like i'm not really in a super at risk category for dying from covid plus yeah every time these viruses mutate they become less deadly because that's how science works right so right. I'm not, not really all that worried about it. So then maybe I'll just show up down in Atlanta this year anyways and just... Yeah, oh, screw it. Just go. Got to wear a mask everywhere. I hate that. But whatever. Yeah. Just wear it like below your nose like everybody else. That's not the proper way to wear it. <laughs> I understand that. I'm just saying that if everyone who is wearing it below their nose, like... Yeah, I don't know. That's not wearing it. No. But it I bothers. Just, it bothers me because if I if I wear a mask, I like I'm a rule follower, right? Right. I wear it correctly. I wear it above my nose. I hate every second of it. Right. But, but and I see all these other fucking jackasses. They're just walking around with it down here. So I'm like, fine, fine. If those are the rules, if those are the rules we're all playing by, I'm going to do it too. Right. Or I'm not going to wear it at all. But if they jumped off a bridge, would you follow them? No, I would enjoy the fucking peace and quiet. Okay. There we go. <laughs> People make way too much noise. There. <laughs> I'm slow I like on the buttons it, today. I, I like how it took like the third time of you like <laughs> manually doing the rim shot to remember like, oh yeah, I have a I button have for that. that. Tape. Yeah. I can do that. <laughs> uh, there was something yeah. else I wanted to ask you and I forgot. Uh, then ask me. I forgot. So I did get a new toolbox, did you? I got my first uh, big boy toolbox. No, I, you sent me a image or I, somehow I saw it, uh, the big craftsman, uh, top and bottom box. Yeah. It's my first big boy toolbox. Very I've cool. always had like this little tiny one. So okay. I'm just pretty stoked to get that. And it's all loaded up now. Nice. Is it in so the garage, all, right? Yes. Okay. So it's a lot more, a lot more organized out there. Nice. So I had one I'm of those hoping back that will lead to some more productivity. It'll certainly help knowing where everything's at. And you just yeah. go right there and get it. There's no fucking around. No. I don't have one of those, but I still know where everything's at in my shop until one of the kids or my wife come and grab shit. Then I don't know. I'm like, where's yeah. this tool? Well, now, now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to lock everything. There you go. <laughs> it's like, you fuckers aren't getting anything. Nice. I'll leave the tools that they can screw with like out and then yeah. they can get all that. Like that can be on the pegboard. Yeah. So you said that you were on Etsy and you found us an untapped cash cow. Yes. So, I don't, I don't know if people can tell behind me, but I own a, a Peloton. Not to you know, humble brag, but I'm rich. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> it's it's the original Peloton. Don't worry. It's not like the Plus or anything. It's not the child-killing one. Um, but I like, And every now and then, I'll, I'll search through like Etsy and Pinterest for like design kind of inspiration on stuff that I want to make. Well, my wife had said, hey, we need to get like some sort of like storage deal for like the shoes – and like towels and stuff for the Peloton because you know, the thing sweat like a freaking stuck hog. And uh, so I was looking through there, like, oh, let's look at some design ideas. And there is a person on Etsy who has like over 4,000 sales. And I don't know if it's just this one item. Is but it Hattie J? No, no, it's not. It's not Hattie J. Okay. No, it's not Heather. Um, <clears throat> but and I, I really should have looked at the name and remembered it so I could give him credit because. Like holy crap! So I looked at it. It looks really nice. It's it's stained wood and like dark walnut is I think the big seller, and um, it's got a spot for the shoes to hook onto. On the Peloton? Yeah. So it, it goes next to your Peloton. You take the Peloton shoes that like clip in, I right? I don't know anything about Pelotons. Okay. Okay. So so you know how like uh, road bikes? Yeah. Clip-on shoes. How you how you have the clip shoes? So yeah. it's the same thing for the bike oh. for the Peloton. 
Okay. So you can hang them next to your bike. You can. It's got like a little slot for some towels and some other shelving, right? And it's not super big. It looks like it's about two feet by two feet. Okay. And she's selling it for like three hundred and fifty bucks. It's walnut. No, it is. So I read the it's, description, it's pine. and this is actual real pine. Her description, real pine, real, real pine, not the fake pine stain. No, not that bullshit stain. Like she was bragging that it's pine, not MDF. Okay. Stained dark walnut, or like golden oak, or yeah. like wa- okay. or like uh the like stains. weather like weather wash. Yeah, she's like yeah. listing off the different the different stains. I'm like, how much was she selling that for? Three forty-five, like three hundred and fifty. Like Twenty-seven dollars worth of. of That's what I said. My wife saw that and she goes, "You need to start making these like yesterday." <laughs> yeah. So, like, I, and there's it's nothing to it. So I'm gonna Did go through all my shot it so I could see it. Or you don't? I'm gonna. I'll send you the link. Okay. To it. I'm and, curious. Uh, but it's amazing. And, like I read it and like I'm looking through the description. Like this has to be actually made out of walnut. Yeah. Or like it cures cancer, right. or makes you lose a ton of weight, or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Like, like because this is some bullshit. Wow, I might have to put that on the website. Yeah, make one. So, and then I'm going to use the cricket to put the Peloton logo on it. There you go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and then jack up the price even more. I have a cricket too. I don't get to yeah. use it as much anymore. Yeah, Morgan take over it. No, she's got her own, and she just oh, for she- Christmas she got a Canon like a professional Canon printer that's as oh. big as this workbench behind me. It costs like $900. That's what we got her for Christmas. Holy shit. It's fucking huge. You can do professional photos and it's, and it's amazing. So she's reorganized her room and it's, she's going to be doing some shit, doing some good work. That's like we reorganized the house. We, uh, so this was my son's room. So, you know, the room where I did the closet remodel. Yeah. I'm sitting in that room now. Oh, okay. The other closet that I didn't remodel. Yeah. It's the room that my son's in now. Nice. He has lived in three out rooms. of the five bedrooms. That's pretty funny. I because uh, so when we moved in, I told him, "Look, you're the oldest. You get to you get first pick. You just can't have the master bedroom. That's for mom and dad. You get to pick of whatever whatever room yeah. you want." So the house we bought was originally a three bedroom. And then they did a two-bedroom addition over the garage. The two-bedroom addition, both of those bedrooms are huge. So I'm like, he's going to totally pick one of those. Yeah. This this kid, I God damn, I love him to death, but he picked the smallest room in the fucking house. What? Be- because it had blue walls. Oh, like you couldn't make and, the other room well, and I, blue. And, well, and I told him, I go, I go, look, I go, when he picked that room, I go, look, is it because of the blue walls? Goes, well, yeah, it's part of it. I go, I can paint. We can paint. Yeah, yeah that's going to be the, the thing. It's like, no, I like this room. I like it. Like, All right, fine. And so he's in that room for like a week. He's like, I kind of wish I had a bigger room. I'm like, yeah, I bet you do. And then my sister was moving into the other uh, additional room. So he got this one. And then my wife was like, I think we should move him into a bigger, into the bigger room. I'm like, I just spent how long <laughs> and how many Closet hundreds makeover. of dollars? Yeah. Like redoing this closet, like I'm not redoing that one. That one's way bigger. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna end up redoing it. So that point. now is your but, office. Yeah. So this is our okay. office. We have our we have our cricket stuff over here. My wife's um, like cool. sewing machine and all okay. her craft stuff. And then we got the Peloton and some of the workout stuff in the uh, in the closet. So it's gonna be kind of a multi-purpose room, and I can set up to do the podcast and not have to tear everything down. Right. Afterwards, everything will just stay connected. Well, that's what I want to do in. When one of the kids moves out, I'm claiming their room for an office and a workout area, and I can move all my podcast stuff up there instead of doing it in the shop. Yeah. Because it takes our 20 son, minutes to set up and 20 minutes to break down this stuff. Yeah. Same here. I got tired of doing it. So now it's like, oh, this is way nicer. Yeah. Cool. Well, congratulations. Yes. This is fun. And then whenever my son moves out, we're going to blow out that wall here and turn our master bedroom into, into a, a master suite. suite. Yeah. I did that in my last house. I took two rooms on one side. One was our master bedroom, and it had an ensuite. And then um, the room next to it was a kid's playroom. So their two rooms were on the other side of the hall, and I'm like, screw this, man. I, I took out their bedroom door in the hallway mm-hmm. and walled it off, and I opened up the wall in between the two rooms, 
I put in French doors and I built an 11 by 11 by 10 walk-in closet in there. So we had the bed and a walk-in closet and then French doors that led to a seating area with a 50 inch television and the ensuite. That was, that was the bomb. That's what sold the house. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That's in about 10 years. Bookshelves too. About 10 years. We're going to be blowing out that wall and then we're going to make our bathroom way bigger. Cause right now our shower is a phone booth. Yeah. And I'm, I don't know if you can see this on, on the YouTubes. I'm not a small human. You're a little bit larger than I. Yeah. Than yeah. I. Big boy. I'm a, I'm a big boy. Get the big boy put pants big, on. Put my big boy pants on. <laughs> Did we cover everything? I don't know. Maybe. Probably. I'm sure we missed something. Bonus segment. Sponsorships well, was, and giveaways we talked about. Yeah. We and talked, yeah. Patreon possibilities we wanted. We, we did touch on that. But, um, yeah. We touched on a little bit. So Patreon could be coming. You could yeah, support us. You could support us because this does take a lot of time and effort and money to do the show. So uh, we are we are putting together a Patreon program. That's a lot of P's. And there will be uh, preferred Patreon programming for our peeps. patrons. For our peeps. Our peeps. I like that better. Yeah. So we'll have Patreon <laughs> peeps. And uh, I think we're going to do three levels. I've seen some at a four. Rather inexpensive. Uh, one of the levels will get you some swag. One will get you uh, pre-show access. I'd like to do one where you get access to something nobody else hears. So we're going to figure out what that is. And then... Uh, and at all the levels, you all get our undying love and affection. Of course. And can you really put a price on that? No. I love you a long time. Come here, we I'll love you a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you want a fresh pillow? You want a fresh pillow? Housekeeping. <laughs> all right. That's called a callback. That's a callback. We don't like them. So uh, thank you for listening to the very first show of 2022. I really Episode. thought you were going to screw that up and be like, <laughs> the very first show, it's like, Mike, we've been doing this for a minute, buddy. No, very first show of 2022. Uh, we're very excited to be back at it again. Look for us to get back on our regular schedule. The days may shift when we're releasing them because we have limited time now in between the recording date and the editing time and stuff. So might push it back a day or two. But uh, stick with us. Uh, we're glad that you guys have supported us this far and this long. So, uh, Brandon... Anything to say before we head out? If you're watching on YouTube, there's a little bell. Subscribe, all that stuff. Look, if you haven't done it by now, you're probably not going to do it. My so. dad subscribes on YouTube. Your dad is a good human. <laughs> yeah, he is. That's another thing I kind of wanted to touch on real quick. Put your shopping carts back where they belong. Your shopping like, carts? Like, yeah. Have you seen this? Like, So Brian Luke over at Dogwood yeah. really brought this up on Instagram where he's like, I don't understand why people don't put it back. And he shows all these shopping carts in the well, parking lot. That's so why now it's become are around. Yeah. So do you know who the cart narcs are? I have no clue. I've never heard that term before in my life. Dude, go on Instagram. Everybody watching, cart narcs on Instagram. You they, <laughs> they're cart they're narc agents. The guy walks around. He's got a camera on. He's got a cone, and then he'll see someone push the cart up like into the bush, and he'll be like, beep, beep, bloop, 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 bloop. cart narc <laughs> agent Smith or cart narcs. Why don't you put that cart right over there where it belongs? Well, that's the, that's the job of the people that work here. No, it's not. Their job is to bring it in from the cart station, not get it to – so you got to check them out. You'll laugh your balls off. They've been punched is this and guy, chased. Has this guy been shot yet? Oh, he's been you – know, <laughs> one of the guys that came after him in the parking lot and chased him for like you know a block was then arrested in Texas, I think, because he shot somebody in the subway or something. So you, you have to watch cart narcs on Instagram. Okay. All right. I'll you'll get addicted. Out. Maybe that's, that's why kind Brian of the, was mentioning that. I don't know. Maybe we'll have to have him on and ask him again. Yeah. But that's the thing I've seen going around, and I've participated in. A, walk your cart back to the to the little corral. They have magnets that they throw onto people's car, and then the people get all pissed off. I don't put shit on my car, and it, you have to check it out. Yeah, yeah. Th- those people are stupid. So, anyways, sure. subscribe. Subscribe. Put like, your cards ring, back. Yeah, put your cards back where they belong. Ring the bell. Be a good human. Be a good human. Um, if you have a question for us, because this is going to be one of the ways that you could win a driver back system. Right. Send your questions, either an audio file, or you can even type it out if you want to hear Mike or I read it, to handcuffs and sawdust podcast at gmail.com. Or you can send them over to Mike at 
Morazzo Woodworking. I have to I have to think about it since you changed your name. I your name. And I'm not in the groove of saying it all every week. Yeah. <laughs> or you can DM me at Full House Woodworking or you can DM the show at Handcuffs and Sawdust Podcast. Like if you, so many ways. So many ways. Make it so easy for you that we really should be getting more questions. And also we should be getting way more reviews on Apple. Like you guys are really slacking. Yeah, just write something. Just Mike's, something. Five, Mike's got an awesome SI swimsuit calendar in the shop. You can put, write that yeah. in there. Yeah. Or you could write a review that has absolutely nothing to do with the show. I think it would be absolutely hilarious. Okay. That might be a, a way to get a driver bag system. It could be. All right. We'll figure it out. All right. I think that's it, man. We're going to get out of here because I'm going to go make a pizza and I'm going to cut some wood for a flag I have to do. Flag number 100. Nice. I'm going to go to bed. Stay safe in the shop and on the streets. Peace. Deuces. And that's it. Scene. Scene. Go to bed, dude.